Well, in Florida, we, uh, well, while we were on the faculty down there at the University of Florida, we uh, wrote a grant, a federal research grant, to provide uh, free books for summer reading for kids that were in first and second grade when we started, and they got free books every summer for three years. So they ended up in uh, uh, fourth or fifth grade at the end of the study. And uh, we ran a book fair at, at 17 different high poverty elementary schools, uh, some in Jacksonville and some down in uh, by Lake Okeechobee, uh, down in the, the Everglades area. And uh, the majority of our, our uh, participants were minority students. Uh, the majority were black or uh, a significant number of Hispanics, particularly down in the, in the southern part of the state. Uh, <clears throat> we ran a book fair, uh, brought about 400 books that we picked that, uh, that were appropriate in terms of difficulty level for the grades the kids were in, uh, and also linked them to uh, one category was called uh, uh, series books, <clears throat> another was called uh, 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 curriculum relevant books, uh, third was uh, minority culture books, and uh, in a fourth we just called it uh, kid, kid culture. Mm -hmm. And kid culture was uh, books like Batman books because of the Batman movie, or uh, Dora the Explorer books. Uh, at that time, Ice Age was, uh, was a recent movie, and there was a Scooby-Doo movie out, and uh, so those books all were part of that. The series books were Junie B. Jones and Captain Underpants and, and, and you name it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the um, curriculum relevant books were uh, tied to uh, science or social studies in the following year. <coughs> and so they might be books on Florida history and geography, or in ancient cultures and so on. And the fifth category of book, which was culturally relevant, uh, were books by African-American or Hispanic authors. Um, the least popular books were the, the uh, culturally relevant. Mm. Even though 95% of our students were ethnic minority students, they chose fewer books from that category than, than, than any other. The second, the next to least popular, <laughs> uh, was the curriculum relevant books. Uh, then came series books, and the most popular were what we called kid culture books. And uh, uh, one school ran counter, counter to that. Uh, the culturally relevant books were a big hit, and we went back to find out why those kids picked the books, but none of the rest of the kids did. And come to find out, the principal had gotten a grant from I don't know, uh, NAACP or someone to to stock a rolling classroom read aloud library with uh, culturally relevant books. And uh, we knew there was something going on because kids were going, look, they got Pink and Say. Look, they got the, the, the Watson School to Birmingham, uh, suggesting they already knew these titles. Uh, but in the other 16 schools, it was like, no, no, no. Right. So anyway, we just gave the kids the books and asked them uh, to, uh, and told them that they were theirs. They could have them for free, and uh, we hope they read them over the summer. We also tried to get uh, book logs uh, returned to us, but any given year, no more than 20% of the kids actually returned their book logs. So, um, and in thinking about it as um, a parent now, I realized if my uh, second grade son had brought home a book log he was supposed to fix along with the mailer, um, first of all, I'm not sure with one of the two sons whether it would have ever made it home. <laughs> and even if it had, I don't know, unless we grabbed it and put it up in the cupboard so we knew where it was when it was time to, it was, a, it was just a single page for each each book. Um, book logs seem to be important um, because the effect size in terms of achievement was twice as large for kids who turned in the book logs than, as opposed to kids who didn't. But that could also be uh, a parental effect, in other words, or a home effect. Mm -hmm. uh, these were kids who came from perhaps better organized homes and, uh, and perhaps parents who were more interested and therefore had their make sure they knew where it was and had their kids fill them out. Uh, but I, I'd still like to have a way to find out how many of our kids actually read books because uh, it's possible some of the kids never read any of the books and uh, other kids might have read those 10 that they got each year plus 10 more, who knows. But the, uh, <clears throat> the effect size over the three years on achievement was just slightly larger than going to summer school for three consecutive summers. 
Um, so our intervention cost about $40 a kid a year, about $125 total, uh, as opposed to uh, almost $3,000 a kid summer school fee. Um, for the kids who returned the book logs, it was twice as large as going to summer school. So our, our, our initial intent was to try to, uh, to demonstrate uh, that uh, reading practice is important. There was a big debate from the National Reading Panel. Uh, the, the bogus NRP report put reading first, uh, produced by the National Institute for Literacy, which didn't really summarize the panel report. But they said in there that the panel had found that uh, independent reading didn't work. And uh, that's not what the panel found, but uh, that's what everybody heard uh, was part of the report. And uh, so we wanted to demonstrate that independent reading might have a positive effect. And uh, I was actually surprised by how large a positive effect it was. So 